Thank you, Weniger Committee, for this honour. Our progressive West Coast friends have for many years been the means of strengthening our belief that Seventh-day Adventism can offer so much richness to life in the modern world. Weniger's recent practice of recognising individual spouses such as Edna May and myself makes it clear that once again our West Coast friends have shown themselves perceptive about the lives of women in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. When a man and a woman share a call from God and love for each other, how are they both to follow their vocations so that each of them can, can thrive spiritually, emotionally, and professionally. If they have children, the question and the answer is more complex still. Many faithful young couples I have worked with continue to struggle with this question. Vocational guidance and support is in very short supply for all church employees. But the vast majority of church expectations are based on the patterns of male lives. When young women turn to our male-led church with its male God, where male knowledge and male experience of God are in so many places unquestioningly assumed to be normative, the average young woman with a vocation receives scant understanding as she seeks to work out her calling and life rhythms alongside that of her spouse. The reaction of young women to this situation varies from fright to fight and often eventually flight not only from this church, but from its God. In the 1980s, after I had had two children and slowly recognised my options, I was very close to being one of those who took flight. I might have been, but I wasn't. And that is down to particular people with gracious gifts of imagination and spirituality, who see the ordination of women as just a symbol of the idea that the work of God needs to see women and men and so many other groups working together as equals. And so as I receive my own award today, I would like to name and honour some of the people in those groups. First, my mother, who, while loving one man supremely, taught me by example and precept to love the brotherhood and company of godly men. Alongside my, brother, uh, my mother, I honour those of my church sisters, too many to name, but they know who they are, who have a passion for God and the work of God and an unerring radar for men with a tendency to patronise or sideline or treat as less than fellow pilgrims, their sisters old and young, who seek to know God. Many of those young women walk tall, but are wounded. I'd like to honour those male leaders who value feminine insights and have easily and naturally discussed God, God's word and God's church with me. Those who share ideas and plans and maybe hardest of all, 
those who share pulpits, conferences, committee memberships, especially when they want them themselves. I want to honour those who understand that what so many of us, male and female, old and young, lack is not giftedness, but self-confidence, which sometimes needs a boost from authentic words of affirmation and insight. And finally, I want to honour those of my church brothers who have taken time out from climbing the greasy pole of church preferment to need, name and nurture me. I'd like to name these of my brothers, Roy Graham, Jan Paulson, Ernest Martyr, Gil Valentine, Daniel Duda, Jean-Claude Verrecchia, and most of all, of course, Michael Pearson. If groups of men like this grow and thrive, there will be more Weniger Awards to husbands and wives. But more than that, the church we all love will thrive too. I pray it may be so.